my name is Kayla Ture and I'm the National American Miss Teen. Welcome to yet another fantastic, amazing, and spectacular episode of HBCU-ish, my Instagram live series highlighting African American pageant queens, students who go to HBCUs, African American trailblazers, inspirations, and role models. Today, I have a pageant legend Chantel O'Brien, and she also formerly happens to be Miss Bahamas Universe and also plays top 10 on Miss Universe. I'm going to wait until Chantel joins. I can't wait to talk to her and ask her so many questions. And thank you all for tuning in live. So guys, before Chantel gets here, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my day. I recently broke my computer. I found out that my screen cracked um, on my new MacBook today at 9 a.m. at my acting class. And I was very, very sad. But I recently just went to the Apple store, so my computer is in process of getting fixed. So that's a little bit of an update for how my day was. It was very stressful. Legends, I'm so excited to speak with Chantel today. And Chantel is joining right now. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on here and talk to us. Okay. So we are going to begin by reading your amazing bio, and then I'm going to deep dive and ask you some questions. We're going to play one or two games, and that's it. Okay? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's a long a motivation bio, so if you have to cut it short, you can do that. Yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to cut it short. Okay. A motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and Christian, Chantel considers charity and mentorship to be the core of her identity. Chantel obtained a Bachelor of Administration degree in business expertise from a college in Scotland. Prior to this, Chantel founded PS Brand Consulting, a pageant, runway, coaching, and consultation agency in 2018 which offers premium, winning, and empowering training to her clients, both locally and internationally. Since her crowning in September 2015 as Miss World Bahamas, where she went on to compete as Miss World, and then her crowning as Miss Bahamas Universe in October 2021, she is now the third Bahamian woman to compete and win these titles and represent the Bahamas at the world's most prestigious pageants. History would have it that she is the first and the only woman to place at Miss Universe with a top 10 finish. She is widely known as an international pageant runway coach and creative who advocates for youth development and other special causes. Welcome, Chantel. I am so excited to speak with you, Chantel. Thank you so much once again for taking out time out of your very busy day to come talk to us. So we're going to start with our game. We're going to change it up a little bit. And this game is guess that quote. I'm going to give you three options. One of those options are the answers. And you're going to pick one out of your options. You guys can also help Chantel out. Okay. And give her maybe a hint. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. The first quote. I don't want race to become a trend. I did not work 28 years for it to become a trend. Was this said by Tyra Banks, Beverly Johnson, or Naomi Campbell? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Um, hmm, was it Beverly? Is that your final choice? Hmm. Maybe Tyra, but I, I want to know if I want to stick with my, my first choice. Let me think. 
Comment down below, guys, if you know the answer. If you want to help, if you want to mission, help, help, help me out. Who okay. said that? I don't. I'm not aware of who said that. But <laughs> I, I, I don't. And forgive me, I may not even be too aware of who Beverly Johnson is. <laughs> They're all um, models. They're all models. Okay. Um, let's go with Tyra Banks. Let's go. With Tyra. Okay. Tyra Banks is incorrect. It was Naomi Campbell. Ah, okay. okay. Interesting. Okay, next one. Don't worry. We have a few more that you could definitely get points on. Okay, next one. <laughs> like comedy, horror has an ability to provoke thought and further conversation on real social issues in a very powerful way. Was this said by Jordan Peele, Tyler Perry, or Ava DuVernay? Um, I'm going to say Jordan Peele since he's in the he's in the horror mm -hmm. thriller kind of genre of, yes. of filmmaking. That's correct. One point, yay! Next one. <laughs> now, now we in the game. <laughs> yes, we're in the game. <laughs> Next one. I'd rather regret the risk. The risk that didn't work out than the chances I did take at all. Was this said by Simone Biles, Gabrielle Douglas, or Usain Bolt? I'd rather take the risk. Hmm. I don't know who would have said that. Um, I don't know who would have said that. I'm going to go with Simone. Simone's correct. Lucky guess. Okay. Another point. Okay. <laughs> One more. Okay. Belief in oneself and knowing who you are. I mean, that's the foundation for everything great. Was this said by DJ Khaled, P. Diddy, or Jay Z? <laughs> I you got um, let, me, let me go with Jay Z on that one. Well, your guess was correct. Again. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Three out of four. I love it. So we did our little game. And the first thing that I want to ask you is about your pageant career. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on the the amount of titles that you've had. And I actually remember watching you competing at Miss Universe and I was like, she is so fantastic. So congratulations, especially on making top 10. Can you talk to us a little bit about your pageant journey and specifically about how it was competing at Miss Universe? Yeah, so thank you first and foremost. I appreciate that. My pageant journey started in 2013 actually and my initial competition was for the Universe Bahamas title. So that first competition was for the hopes of going to Miss Universe and that year I placed first runner up so that 2013, I placed first runner up, and then I entered for the Miss World Bahamas title. So following that, 2014, 2015, I competed for Miss World Bahamas. I placed second runner up the following year. And then 2015 is when I won the Miss World Bahamas title. And so I had the opportunity to compete at Miss World in Sanya, China, and that was uh, phenomenal. And it, it's still something I remember to this day. And really and truly, I, I did a lot of smaller pageants and things like that. Um, but in the Bahamas, pageantry is just a little bit different. A lot of the, comp for example, we have franchise holders that hold particular systems. And so I wish I had the opportunity to try out other systems as well. Um, but I did try out the universe title first and then world. And then going into 2021, I, I never really thought about entering to compete for Miss Bahamas Universe again, actually. I was pretty much over it. I started my coaching business in 2018. So that was my main focus. And so when, I, when it was placed in my spirit, when God was like, okay, go ahead and compete, I was like, I don't want to. And I was really fighting him on it. And so... It really turned out, you know, with obedience, it, it worked itself out that a competition that I competed in nine years prior 
I went ahead and won, and then I became the first woman uh, to be able to place and, and in the competition from the Bahamas. And my Miss Universe experience was, yeah, my Miss Universe experience was phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I was able to be at peace the entire process. And then I was able to meet a lot of really great women. I mean, super smart, super ambitious women that were doing substantial things not just for themselves, but for their countries. And so that was equally inspiring for me. And so it's a, it's a, it's a moment that I really wish I could get back. It's, it's really one of those moments I wish I could rewind and experience for another moment again. But I just, I'm really thankful to have had the opportunity. I love that. And a lot of people that are watching are actually current pageant titles, title holders or prospective title holders, people that would love to win a title. Do you have any advice for anyone that dreams of becoming Miss Universe? Maybe any tricks or tips of how to get close or maybe even to be able to win that national title to represent their country? I think one of the things I really learned throughout my journey is how much more mature I became each time I competed. And so for anyone that might have competed and they just haven't won as yet or, you know, maybe they haven't placed or anything like that, I would definitely say don't be discouraged. I think that if you can look, look for the lessons that are in those quote unquote losses, you're able to use those to actually better yourselves and help your perspective so that when you do re-enter, you don't enter as the same person, if that makes sense. And then for anyone that's competing for the first time, or maybe you have a state title, whatever have you, I think it's really important to go in it with a, a thought process of just enjoying yourself. Because a lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves, we are overthinking, and it tells in our face on stage, it tells in our face on, you know, in judges' interview, it tells in our face when we're just engaging with, you know, staff and other people around us. So I just say, enjoy the process, take, take it easy. And I would say invest in yourself. A lot of people don't want to invest in themselves when it comes down to um, maybe getting a coach or maybe spending time working more on their platform or whatever have you. But, you know, no good thing is going to happen if you don't put in the proper investments and you don't take the right and appropriate channels towards your dreams. So those would be one, some of the things that I think would really help you not just win, but really um, enjoy your win. Like it, it won't just be like, oh, I want, but you really got so much from it. It'll be fruitful. I love your answer. And one of the many amazing things that you are known for is your fierce runway walk. So can you maybe give us a trick or tip on how you were able to learn how to walk so amazing? Yeah, listen, it takes it takes the right shoes. First of all, you definitely need the right heels and you need heels that definitely speak to your feet. <laughs> as weird as that sound sounds. Um, but it really comes down to just being confident. Don't be intimidated by the stage or by what you think you can't do. I think if you set your mind to a thing, you can definitely do it. And it's about just owning, you know, you. Own it, owning yourself to the point where it doesn't matter how people view you in that moment as you're on stage and you're walking. Your mindset isn't about everybody around you. You know, it's about yourself setting and creating the moment that you're going to be able to look back on and say, yeah, I definitely was taking my time. I had fun. I really brought out my best. And so get the right heels, get the right mindset and practice, practice, practice. Nobody's walk is going to look the same. And so just because your walk doesn't look like someone else's walk doesn't mean that your walk isn't great. So that's first and foremost. Your walk is going to be signature to you, to your personality, to your vibe, to your flavor, and that's okay. I love that answer. So since we talked a little bit about your fantastic pageant journey, I want to talk more about HBCU-ish and what Black History Month means to you. So can you talk to us about what Black Girl Magic means to you and how you're able to spread that message in your everyday life? Yeah, so I think that Black, I mean, coming from a Caribbean country, as you know, the population is mostly Black, you know what I mean? Uh, like they've been saying all this time, Blackly, Blackly, Black, you know what I mean? So it's amazing to be a part of, I think, a culture that cultivates and really pushes um, 
black people you know what i mean obviously there are some challenges just like anywhere else when it comes to things like colorism and everything else like that but ultimately black girl magic to me is just being able to own who um one was created to be one who isn't apologetic about you know the way their hair is they're not their hair the way that their body is shaped you know knowing that you know we're going to come in all sorts of shapes and sizes also knowing that our personalities are going to be bold it might be different you know it might be more laid back it doesn't matter but we don't need to apologize for being who we are and black girl magic is also being able to uplift the next black girl you know what i mean it's about empowering one another and i think especially moving forward as we go on even outside of black history month just month by month just being able to help other women up the ladder is so important and i think that you're not doing anything if you're at the top if you're not helping anybody get up there with you and so i think black girl matter, uh, magic really speaks to uh just the the the, the i don't know just the grouping and the connections that we're always going to have like we're always going to get it you know they say the girls that get it get it we're always going to get it we're going to understand the struggles we're going to understand the wins we're going to understand the motivations we're going to understand the ambitions and so the more we do it together the better we're going to grow the stronger we're going to become i most definitely agree and you are from the amazing caribbean island and my grandfather was actually is actually from Trinidad. So can you tell us what makes your island so special and what's your favorite cultural dish? Sure. So for those who don't know I'm from the Bahamas and um what's my favorite dish you said? Mm -hmm. um, um I will all, I will never turn down conch. Anything conch, conch salad, um crack conch it doesn't matter what form it comes in i will always be down for anything conch and for those who don't know what that is it's basically a seafood dish um very similar to what would it be similar to maybe almost kind of sort of i want to say calamari just to give you a little idea of it but it's it's still very different um and it's just really just delicious and if if it's one cheat meal i have all the time it's crack conch peas and rice, coleslaw, every single time. Ooh, sounds delicious. After the live, I will definitely be putting that on my list of delicious meals to eat. <laughs> um, my, <laughs> yes. my next question for you is, do you have a Black artist or maybe even pageant queen or performer that you look up to or that inspires you and why? Hmm. A Black artist. I think if I had to a black artist I don't know I'm not listening to a lot of music contrary to popular belief I don't I'm not listening to a lot of different music right now or even for a while I listen to things very randomly um so I'm going to say a black pageant queen so many I feel like if I choose one I got to choose everybody uh -huh. because everyone inspires me in such a way I'm um, a lot of different um black queens um miss universe jamaica davina bennett she is definitely someone I think is incredible um she was miss jamaica universe 2017 um I definitely love my pageant sister miss universe haiti um uh, it's so many people so many people come into my mind my mentor her name is Pastor Delfa Samuels um and she was Mistress Florida International it's it's a lot of queens that I know that I think in different ways they convey different types of confidence different types of grace and elegance and poise that I connect to that I um continue to want to walk in that same pathway with them so those are not my final answers. I have like a long list, but those are the ones who come to my mind right now. I love that. We are going to play our last game. Then we're going to ask you a few more questions. Comment down below if you guys have any more questions for Chantel. This is going to be a very, very quick live because Chantel has a very busy and amazing life. But I'm so happy 
that she was able to take time out of her day to speak to us. So we're going to play our game. I ask maybe like one or two more questions. If you guys have any questions for Chantel, please comment down below. This is called this or that. I'm going to give you two options. You're going to tell us which option and why. Are you ready? Right. Okay. This is a three-part one, this one, first one. Would you rather have a Naomi Campbell walk, Rihanna's sense of fashion, or the voice of both Beyonce and Whitney Houston? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So I really like my walk. Naomi, Naomi has a great walk, but I love mine. So I, I'll leave Naomi's walk. Um, Rihanna's sense of fashion. I think I'm doing right well right now. If I have Rihanna's bank account, though, <laughs> probably could do a little bit more. Or the voice of, you know what? I think I'm okay in a fashion sense. So I would say Beyonce and Whitney Houston's voice. Like, if I could blow like that, yeah, that would be cool. I love that. I would definitely, I mean, I love all of them. I would definitely also want to have a great voice. And I just feel like, People that are able to sing really good, that's something that you can, you can sing anywhere. You could just start like belting a song. So, I yeah, it's definitely. Good. Okay, next one braids, ponytails, or a nice wash and go? Well, wash and go don't really work for my hair <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, I think I would say my point. My ponytail arrow was pretty nice, I have to say. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go with braids. I love, I love a good braiding style every so often. Don't have to touch it. Don't have to worry about it. Just wake up and leave. Yeah, I love a good braid every so often. I also love braids. And since you said braids, are you a knotless girl or a non-knotless girl? I'm a knotless girl for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it take, but with shorter hair is so much more tricky because it's like so much. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of hair combs. I'm one of them. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of of hair combs, so mm -hmm. I, I'm always like put through the ringer when I'm getting the done. <laughs> I also love that. Okay, next one: unlimited Telfar bags or unlimited clothes from Ivy Park. Hmm. So. I I don't own a towel or a bag now, and I actually don't own anything Ivy Park. Does I Ivy Park do other than leisure wear? Do they do other like stuff? I, like other stuff? I don't know. I think they might have athletic wear. I could be wrong. Yeah. So I'm an athletic girl sometimes, so, but not all the time. So I'm gonna take the bag. <laughs> unlimited <laughs> tell far for a little while. Yeah, I'll take the unlimited tell far. Okay. And my last one for you. This might start some controversy. Black Panther or Wakanda Forever. Wow. 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 This is hard. Um wow. That's not Nice. I know. I, can't <laughs> I told choose. you. I told you. I can't choose. I, I enjoy both. I enjoy both of the films. They, I felt like Wakanda Forever really honored chatting with Bozeman in a really great way. Very powerful. So I can't really. And Black Panda just shifted culture, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't choose. I won't choose. They, they're both top two. I got you. I, it's, it's understandable. I did tell you this was going to be super hard, so you had a, you had a caution. <laughs> okay. And Michael so, B. Jordan uh, was in both, yeah, so yes. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question for you is a two-part question. It is, do you have any advice for students that want to learn more about Black History Month and Black culture but don't know where to start? And do you have a message for someone that does not have a lot of self-confidence? Um, I think that if you don't know where to start, if, if you're a student, I think that it's very essential for you to, they say Google is free, but I think that it's really good to just go into your libraries and just, you know, look up certain books or even podcasts that talk about, the, you know, Black history, that talk about, you know, historical, influential Black people. 
that would have contributed to just society in general, that's always a start. You could always implement different things on, on your campus or within your circle, within your group to be able to learn more and also share the knowledge that you get, that you've received. And I think it's also essential um, to be open-minded. I mean, you, you will only know as far as you allow yourself to go. Even our social media is curated to what we want to see. So if you want to see more things about Black history, then you have to look up the accounts that show that. You know, if you want to see more, wherever you spend the most time, that some way, somehow, you curate a routine for yourself. And in curating that routine, you can curate the routine that focuses on you learning more about your, your history and about Black history in general. Now, the second question, what was it again? It was, do you have a message for a boy or girl that has a lot of lack of self-confidence? Lack of self-confidence. I think that one of the things that I had to learn is that um, my self-confidence will always impact me first. And so my advice to any any boy or girl, any woman or, or man that's dealing with a lack of self-confidence is to realize that wherever you go in life or however far you're going to head in life will always come down to you and the choices that you make. And I think that if it's one thing you can do is when you believe that you will wake up each day and you believe in, you know, other people and their dreams and their goals, I want you to take that same conviction and place it within yourself and know that all of the things that are super impossible are the things that you definitely should try. Those are the things that you should try strive for. Because whether or not you fail, it doesn't matter because failure is a part of the process. And failure is actually the, the strongest and best ingredient to success. And so be confident in knowing that you're not the only person that's losing, that's failing, that's, you know, not having it all work out for them in the end or have that fairy tale, you know, story. But confidence lies in the fact that you know that you can do whatever it is you set your mind to. And I'd also say to align yourself with people who also believe in themselves, because if you are with any network that don't believe in themselves, they'll find it hard to believe in you. So if you have a network or a group of people that um, are very strong believers in their capabilities, that's going to help motivate you to also um, be a believer in yourself. I most definitely agree. It has been such an honor speaking to you. You've been one of my many significant role models, whether it's in pageantry or just just like business, because you are such a girl boss and you're honestly such an inspiration. It's been such an honor talking to you. Thank you, like I said before, for taking time out of your busy day to come support HBCU-ish. And it's just been such an honor. I thank you once again. And thank you to everyone who tuned in to listen to Chantel. Follow her. If you have any more questions for her, you guys can DM her. And I'm just so thankful to have had you. Thank you so much, Chantel. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for everyone who was listening. I hope that you took one or two things from both me and Kayla tonight. Thank you. Yes, have a great day, guys. And thank you once again for tuning in. Bye, Chantel.